I was ready to die. They force you to choose whether you're going to be a human and then you're going to be shot to death or turn to be an animal and live. It's a choice. I'm Sandor Vandor, a Holocaust survivor. I was forced on a death march for five days to reach a brick factory, a way station, where I was ready to work. At age 19, it was to make me work, expending all my physical energy until I dropped dead. People were work to death by forcing them to exert 3,000 or more calories daily. All that work while providing an extremely low calorie diet with food rations of only 200, 250 calories a day. The Nazi first commandment was, the citizens may not talk to a Jew, may not invite a Jew in their home, and may not give food to a Jew. It's all punishable by death or concentration camp. The brave local population helped us with food supplement. 60 years later, upon a time, it was 1945, I'm on the road to the abyss in the dark. At the crossroad, Maria appeared as Princess of Light, also Martha as Maiden at her right. With magical food, she illuminated the way back to life. Despite all her good deeds, she nurtured doubts. Sixty years later, I traversed land and sea. We yearned for a reunion and we met again. While clutching her hand, Martha and me oversee her tears were washing away all the remaining doubts. <clears throat> Elizabeth Weinhandel was present at all meeting, bringing the language barrier with helpful trans translation. <clears throat> the Santa Ana women in 1944-45 were actively helping Jewish slave laborers with food supplement, doing good deeds against Nazi barbarism. During those visits, I repeatedly acknowledged their brave, righteous act and said, thank you. The people in Santa Ana had different ideas. They risked their lives, they risked their family lives, and they helped the Jews to survive by giving them food which was prohibited. After I told the story, 
She painted an apple in acrylic. Over the apple, she printed the simple sentence, it only takes one apple to create a family. This is what this, she took off to the, from the story that people didn't have to do too much. They just had to do a little bit to protect or provide help to a downtrodden. And by giving an apple was sufficient to sustain my life. And in real life, I survived. I married a woman who was also a survivor from Auschwitz concentration camp. <coughs> and without parents, without relatives, we were married and able to work together and create family. Why should I, I feel hate? Hate what? Hate the people who helped me to survive? I came here to say thank you for helping me to survive, not hate. Besides that, what is hate? Hate, for me, the way I look at it, is a self-inflicted wound. What happens when you hate? It, did anybody get hurt? <coughs> no. Did anybody know that you hate somebody? No. Who knows that you hate? Only you. And that's suffering. Why do you want to suffer? There's no reason. So there is no hate. And they needed labor to build for border reinforcements. And uh, that's how I ended up with. It's not that they ask me whether I want to do it or not. When you join an army, they say you have to go here or there and you will go. There's no, no say, oh, I don't like the climate over there or I don't like the food over there. I don't want to go. You have to go. <coughs> well, in a way, I didn't know and I wasn't thinking of that this is my last day. What I was thinking is I lost weight. I wasn't able to complete that much work. So I felt that the end is coming. Then I became sick. Fractifus, just to show how deadly that is. About 45, 50 people in my group, they, we all had Fractifus, and we, was, uh, we were isolated in one barrack and left there with no food, no drink, nothing. Out of the 45, 50, five of us walked away. The rest died. That's how, that was the nature of the disease. And the disease with the, con with the physical conditions we, are, we were in. So I was able to see or foresee that I will die eventually soon. But I, I knew that no food will make me die out of hunger. 
And that was a very hard way to die. It's painful and it's extending long time. So I didn't think of what's happening in the future. I was working on, on the present and hoping for the best. I came home from the hell. I find out that my sister survived. And also I find out that my mother, my father survived. But on the same time I find out my mother was killed. I was a 20-year-old young man. Prior that, I lost a year of my life in labor camp. So I was still dehumanized. So I was still maybe in the tune of age 18 or 19. And then I realized that I, I lost my mother. Without a mother, there is no family. And I still miss my mother. It happened already so many years ago. But because it happened not as a process of getting old and old age, everybody will die. But for me, she's still missing. The death march was given the order to march from one place to another place, but you cannot leave the column. If you leave the column, you will be shot to death immediately. No matter what reason you leave the column, you will be shot. That's the definition of the death march. You cannot leave the column. It not only took a very long time, I'm not sure whether it's already done. Because it's the process, it's a long time process, and I'm not sure whether we've done already, you know, it's completely clear. But I still uh, can manage. The prob the worst part is that you have a choice. You lose your humanity, humanitation, the dehumanizing. You, in person, take the part of being dehumanized. They force you to choose whether you're going to be a human and then you're going to be shot to death or turn to be an animal and live. It's a choice. And what psychologically makes the man to create to make a choice like that and what's the outlook for the future is very difficult to say um, I can only say thank you for coming come this well, I say thank you for letting me hear. Thank you.